Hello again, everyone. Welcome to our daily devotion for Sunday, April 10th, 2022. Thank you so much for spending this time with me in God's word today, as together we grow in our faith and in our knowledge of Jesus Christ as our Savior. We have seen that the people of Israel have complained against the Lord and against Moses and Aaron multiple times, many times, during their wanderings in the wilderness. Today, they are going to complain about a lack of water. On many of those, or on really all of those other times when the people complained against the Lord because they didn't like the food or there wasn't any water, both Moses and Aaron interceded for the people before the Lord. And in many ways, they protected the people from a, a, a consequence that might have come upon the people had Moses and Aaron not interceded for the people. Today, we're going to see that Moses and Aaron kind of reach a breaking point with the people. They lose their patience, and instead of following the Lord's instructions, they go against the Lord's instructions. The Lord tells Moses and Aaron that they are to go to a particular rock and then speak to the rock, and then water will come out of the rock. The Lord intended for this to be a demonstration of his mercy and his love for the people. Moses and Aaron are going to unfortunately include themselves in with the Lord as the ones who are going to be bringing water out of this rock. And as Moses strikes the rock with his staff, instead of speaking to it, he's going to turn what God intended to be a demonstration of his mercy into a demonstration of law and a demonstration of, of well, something other than the Lord's mercy. As a result, the Lord is going to tell Moses and Aaron that they will not be able to enter the promised land of Canaan. Moses will get to see the land before he dies, and we'll see that uh, before we read the account of Moses' death, that he, the Lord does give him the ability to see the length and the breadth of the land from the top of a mountain east of the Jordan River, but they will not enter the land of Canaan. The people of Israel are then going to come upon their distant relatives, the Edomites, the Edomites were descended from Esau, who was the brother of Jacob. Jacob, of course, was the ancestor of the people of Israel. The Israelites are going to ask the Edomites for permission to go through their land, and they'll promise not to do anything to damage the land of Edom. You can imagine that the Edomites would be a little reluctant to let a nation of perhaps as many as two million people just walk through their territory. Um, but the people of Israel promise they will repay them for any food that they take. They'll stay on the uh, king's highway. They're not going to do any damage to the Edomite land. The Edomites, however, are going to refuse, and so the Israelites are going to have to go around the land of Edom. And then we'll end our reading of Numbers chapter 20 with the account of the death of Aaron. The entire Israelite community entered the wilderness of Zin in the first month, and they settled in Kadesh. Miriam died and was buried there. There was no water for the community, so they assembled against Moses and Aaron. The people quarreled with Moses and said, If only we had perished when our brothers perished before the Lord. Why have you brought the Lord's assembly into this wilderness for us and our livestock to die here? Why have you led us up from Egypt to bring us to this evil place? It's not a place of grains, figs, vines, and pomegranates. And there's no water to drink. Then Moses and Aaron went from the presence of the assembly to the doorway of the tent of meeting. They fell face down, and the glory of the Lord appeared to them. The Lord spoke to Moses, take the staff and assemble the community. You and your brother Aaron are to speak to the rock while they watch and it will yield its water. You will bring out water for them from the rock and provide drink for the community and their livestock. So Moses took the staff from the Lord's presence, just as he had commanded him. Moses and Aaron summoned this, the assembly in front of the rock, and Moses said to them, listen, you rebels, must we bring water out of this rock for you? Then Moses raised his hand and struck the rock twice with his staff so that abundant water gushed out, and the community and their livestock drank. But the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, Because you did not trust me to demonstrate my holiness in the sight of the Israelites, you will not bring this assembly into the land I have given them. These are the waters of Meribah, 
where the Israelites quarreled with the Lord, and he demonstrated his holiness to them. Moses sent messengers from Kadesh to the king of Edom. This is what your brother Israel says. You know all the hardships that have overtaken us. Our ancestors went down to Egypt, and we lived in Egypt many years. But the Egyptians treated us and our ancestors badly. When we cried out to the Lord, he heard our plea and sent an angel and brought us out of Egypt. Now look, we are in Kadesh, a city on the border of your territory. Please let us travel through your land. We won't travel through any field or vineyard or drink any well water. We will travel the king's highway. We won't turn to the right or the left until we have traveled through your territory. But Edom answered him, you will not travel through our land, or we will come out and confront you with the sword. We will go on the main road, the Israelites replied to them, and if our herds drink your water, we will pay its price. There will be no problem. Only let us travel through on foot. Yet Edom insisted, you may not travel through. And they came out to confront them with a large force of heavily armed people. Edom refused to allow Israel to travel through their territory, and Israel turned away from them. After they set out from Kadesh, the entire Israelite community came to Mount Hor. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron at Mount Hor on the border of the land of Edom, Aaron will be gathered to his people. He will not enter the land I have given the Israelites, because you both rebelled against my command at the waters of Meribah. Take Aaron and his son Eliezer and bring them up Mount Hor. Remove Aaron's garments and put them on his son Eliezer. Aaron will be gathered to his people and die there. So Moses did as the Lord commanded, and they climbed Mount Hor in the sight of the whole community. After Moses removed Aaron's garments and put them on his son Eliezer, Aaron died there on top of the mountain. Then Moses and Eliezer came down from the mountain. When the whole community saw that Aaron had passed away, the entire house of Israel mourned for him 30 days. Today we again read two Psalms of David. Psalm 58 is a cry against injustice, and Psalm 59 is a Psalm that David wrote when Saul sent agents to watch his house and kill him. Psalm 58. Do you really speak righteously, you mighty ones? Do you judge people fairly? No, you practice injustice in your hearts. With your hands, you weigh out violence in the land. The wicked go astray from the womb. Liars wander about from birth. They have venom like the venom of a snake, like the deaf cobra that stops up its ears, that does not listen to the sound of the charmers who skillfully weave spells. God, Knock the teeth out of their mouths. Lord, tear out the young lion's fangs. May they vanish like water that flows by. May they aim their blunted arrows. Like a slug that moves along in slime, like a woman's miscarried child, may they not see the sun. Before your pots can feel the heat of the thorns, whether green or burning, he will sweep them away. The righteous one will rejoice when he sees the retribution. He will wash his feet in the blood of the wicked. Then people will say, yes, there is a reward for the righteous. There is a God who judges on earth. Psalm 59. Rescue me from my enemies, my God. Protect me from those who rise up against me. Rescue me from evildoers and save me from men of bloodshed. Because look, Lord, they set an ambush for me. Powerful men attack me, but not because of any sin or rebellion of mine. For no fault of mine, they run and take up a position. Awake to help me and take notice. Lord, God of armies, you are the God of Israel. Rise up to punish all the nations. Do not show favor to any wicked traitors. They return at evening, snarling like dogs and prowling around the city. Look, they spew from their mouths sharp words from their lips, for who they say will hear. But you laugh at them, Lord. You ridicule all the nations. I will keep watch for you, my strength, because God is my stronghold. My faithful God will come to meet me. God will let me look down on my adversaries. Do not kill them. 
Otherwise, my people will forget. By your power, make them homeless wanderers and bring them down, Lord, our shield. For the sin of their mouths and the words of their lips, let them be caught in their pride. They utter curses and lies. Consume them in fury. Consume them until they are gone. Then people will know throughout the earth that God rules over Jacob. And they return at evening, snarling like dogs and prowling around the city. They scavenge for food. They growl if they are not satisfied. But I will sing of your strength and will joyfully proclaim your faithful love in the morning. For you have been a stronghold for me, a refuge in my day of trouble. To you, my strength, I sing praises because God is my stronghold, my faithful God. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Thank you so much for spending this time with me in God's word today. May the Lord richly bless your day. And I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow.